Hello and welcome to the podcast. Today we're doing a very special report, part one of four, where we're going to be covering by request by you, uh, the subscribers, uh, the top reasons to invest in certain foreign currencies and exotic bonds. Uh, before we get started, if you do like the channel and the content, please do like, subscribe, and share as it will help the channel grow. Uh, so today we're going to be covering specifically the Iraqi dinar and why we believe it's a worthy and good investment. There are many reasons to invest in the dinar, but the primary reason you need to do is take it to God and ask him what you should do. Because you might not be a candidate for the dinar for the simple fact that he might not want you to have it or it just might not be for you. It, it's a specialty investment like anything else. It's for some, but it's not for everyone, just like certain cryptocurrencies and other investments. It's a niche market. But we're going to give you what we believe are the top five reasons to invest in the Iraqi dinar, if, again, it is for you to do so. There are many reasons, but we've narrowed it down to what we believe are the five primary ones. And the first one would be, it's the original holy land of Mesopotamia. It's in the region where Jesus was born. Uh, in that Middle East area, Kim Clement has talked about it and prophesied it many, many times over. Number two, they are number 30th in gold reserves in the world. Uh, they're the second largest oil producer in the Middle East, second only to Saudi Arabia, and one of the, in the top five in gold reserves within the Middle East. But they're also very rich in oil, as you probably know. We just talked about that. Diamonds, silver, palladium, and they're also the number one producer of phosphorus in the world. So if you're using any products at all that contain phosphorus, chances are you got it from the original source, which is Iraq. Number three, Saudi Arabia, which we just alluded to, has now recently helped them ascend to the World Trade Organization. Obviously, they're going to need to get all their bills and taxes and tariffs and, and uh, hydrocarbon law, once again, another oil revenue stream for the Kurds and other uh, factions. We'll need to get that into Parliament. We believe that's already been established behind the scenes. It's now just making its way to Parliament. And that's where a lot of the Iranian proxy government is going to resist. You have to understand that there's opposition on both sides because they're trying to keep this from happening because they know that once Iraq breaks free, the end of their corruption and dominance will end. But that being said, uh, Saudi Arabia has now helped them to get into the World Trade Organization. It's, it's, it's a vital step for Iraq to return to the international stage for the purposes of reinstating their currency. Uh, many countries, including China, Germany, Italy, Russia, and several others, are vying to do business with Iraq. A good example would be they've had power structure issues, electrical grid and the like, not unlike here in America. Siemens, a well-known German company who has presence here in America as well, has made uh, significant inroads in investing in Iraq for said purposes of helping with the infrastructure. Number four. Iraq is the next up and coming Dubai. Remember, not too long ago, Dubai was an unknown, uh, untapped market in the world, and now it's become a haven for travel, tourism, trade, and commerce. Iraq figures to be much the same way. For some of the aforementioned, the reasons that we just mentioned, um, they're also working on the largest building in the Middle East, uh, the Herbal Tower, and they have one of the wealthiest and highly, most highly infrastructured airports in Baghdad. It's got tons of concrete and steel over what uh, most American airports would even have. And it's for the purposes of doing business, trade, and commerce uh, internationally. So they are positioned and poised uh, to be, as I said, the, the next iteration of Dubai. Um, a fifth reason, by investing in them, you're actually helping your cause because you're investing in the greatest wealth transfer that God has created in history that will never happen again in our lifetime, uh, which think of what that's going to do for you, your family, your friends, your community, projects and initiatives that you've wanted to do maybe for your entire life but haven't had the resources to do so. So by investing in them, you're also investing in the good of your own community, home, and well-being. Uh, but uh, another valid reason, this is just a bonus reason, is we've been here before. Uh, there are many experts in the financial field as it relates to the stock market and commodities market that may not know that this is not a precedent. Iraq in the 1940s was $4.07 to the U.S. dollar. When Saddam Hussein was a little kid in the 50s, it was actually as high as $5. That's a historic fact, not opinion. All of this that I've given you are factual information. It's not just speculative uh, musings. 
And once again, I'm not a financial advisor, and this is not me giving you financial advice. It's just giving you years of research, prayer, and study with other learned people, people in the know, that have been um, kind enough and gracious enough to share that information with me over a very long time, almost 11 years. So it's been tried and tested, but we have been here before. So this is not a new thing. This is just taking it to the next level. So Iraq is what doing what's called a reinstatement. That means that their rate was previously higher at one point, in this case, higher than the US dollar by four to five dollars. And they're now coming back again at their previous rate and then will go upwards. They're also part of the new digital asset backed platform. We touched a minute ago how Iraq has very rich reserves in gold and other things. They're going to use those resources and mechanisms to power up their dinar digitally, as will many other countries. So these are all factual pieces that you can put together to decide whether or not Iraq is, is good for you. Just because it may not be for you does not mean it's not a viable or noteworthy investment. Just like anything else, it's for some, not for everyone. But it will be the original initiator or the, the ribbon cutter. Uh, if, if you were looking at a mall and you cut a ribbon, it's the grand opening for all the other currencies to follow suit after the dinar reinstates. So that's just kind of an overview on the dinar. Um, let me know if this was uh, valuable for you in the comment section or any additional questions, but um, many of you felt it was important to kind of highlight some of these other currencies and bonds and, and kind of uh, debunk them or give them uh, credence and credibility as to why they might be good investments. So I pray this blesses you. Have a great day and we'll talk soon.